Hello there and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, this is Al24 News streaming live from the capital Algiers and I'm Abdurrahim Kashour and to the headlines. Veteran Al Jazeera journalist was shot and killed while covering a Zionist raid in the occupied West Bank town of Jenin. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov had to a man to attend a meeting with a man Sultan Haytham bin Tariq in Muscat. Two journalists were killed on Monday in Veracruz state in Mexico, bringing the total number to 11 victims since the beginning of the year. Scandal of spying on the phones of Spanish officials, most notably Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, continues to create the events in Spanish political and media circles. Hello again and welcome. Those were today's top stories. First, in our topic on news, veteran Al Jazeera journalist was shot and killed while covering a Zionist raid in the occupied West Bank town of Jenin early Wednesday. Shireen Abu al a well-known Palestinian reporter for the broadcaster Arabic language channel, was shot in the face by a single bullet, and another Palestinian journalist, Ali Asamudi, was wounded in the back in the same incident. It is clear that the occupation sought through this heinous crime to target and assassinate our colleague Shirina Mu'akli to convey the message that there are no red lines for the press, but also went further than that. And this proves to all of us that the departure of journalist Shirin was at the hands of the cunning Zionist army, and therefore her name is recorded in the list of martyrs. The death of our colleague, journalist Shirin, hurts us, but the Zionist forces wanted to obliterate the truth of the assassination. And this is what prompts us to continue the coverage and true loyalty to the blood of the martyr and all the martyrs who preceded her. We aspire to strive to confront and criminalize the occupation. We exposed ourselves to the army and the passerbys that we are press TV. We arrived and within seconds there was the first shot. I found Shala shielding herself by a tree and screaming. I turned and found Shireen on the ground in the first few seconds. With the shooting and we were telling each other we were being shot at. The shooting continued for more than three minutes on the teams that were there. Ali was injured. He was able to cross the street and get to a point of safety. And the shooting still continued. It's worth mentioning that these testimonies and the reaction were sent by a Palestinian journalist, Wissam Abu Zaid. Two other topical news, the German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock was in Ukraine on Tuesday. Annalena traveled to Bucha, a town near Kiev, where hundreds of dead civilians were discovered after the Russian occupation in March and spoke with residents of the locality. We will continue to support European and free Ukraine in humanitarian, financial, economic, technological, political and energy terms. And not only today, but also, and above all, tomorrow and in the long term. That is why we resume today the minimal presence of our German embassy here in Kyiv, initially in a limited way. We can make a small contribution by supporting the investigation of war crimes and crimes against humanity as an international community by gathering evidence and ensuring that the culprits are held into account. In the same line of thought, during a press conference with uh, his German counterpart, Annalena Baerbock, the Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuliba stressed that Germany has changed its position on arms supplies to Ukraine, initiating a new policy vis-à-vis -vis Russia. Germany has changed its position on arms supplies to Ukraine. Chancellor Scholz announced the beginning of a new policy towards Russia. 
Sealed with the Russia-Ukraine fight, Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi and U.S. President Joe Biden on Tuesday reiterated the unity against Russia and in support of Ukraine during a meeting at the White House. The head of the Italian government considered uh, the Russian special military operation in Ukraine had strengthened the link between the United States and Italy, and more broadly between the United States and all Europe. But uh, what happened in Ukraine is going to bring a, a drastic change in European Union. We've always been close. Now we're going to be much closer. And uh, but I know I can I can count on your support as a true friend of Europe and of Italy, of course. Putin really believed he could split us, yeah. and we got we've, uh, we've all stepped up. I believe that. Uh, a strong European Union is in the interest of the United States. Granted, it adds competition economically, but it's good. It's good. And same line of thought, speaking from the White House, U.S. President Joe Biden acknowledged the difficulties Americans are facing due to the inflation, but promises to do everything to curb rising prices. Joe Biden laid the blame for rising costs on, the key, on two key factors, once in a century pandemic that shut down the global economy and the conflict in Ukraine. I want, uh, I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously and it's my top for domestic priority. Making our supply chains more secure is a major focus of my economic strategy. So things move more quickly. Prices go down, not up. Still with the economy, but this time in Hungary, Hungary's Prime Minister said on Monday that the country's economy would be destroyed unless Russian shipments via pipelines are exempted from the EU all sanctions against Moscow. Peter uh, said that following talks with the EU officials, an agreement between Budapest and Brussels on the proposed ban still looked unlikely. The EU's executive arm is willing to help Hungary and other countries dependent on Russian oil, according to EU Commission spokesman. Uh, we uh, acknowledge uh, that Hungary uh, and other countries uh, that are landlocked and have um, a significant energy dependency on uh, Russian oil supply are in a very specific situation which requires uh, that, uh, that uh, we find specific solutions. So that was what the discussion was about. It was a very constructive uh, discussion which allowed us to identify a certain number of issues on which to work. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and his Belgian power counterpart Alexander de Croo opposed any questioning of post-Brexit agreement establishing a special status for Northern Ireland. This comes after the United Kingdom has hinted at the possibility of unilaterally suspending part of the Brexit agreement if no new deal can be reached with the European Union. Nabil Khazini on what follow. There is no room for breaking the Northern Ireland Protocol. From Berlin, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz opposed any questioning of post-Brexit agreement establishing a special status for Northern Ireland after a report said that London was ready to drop large parts of the protocol, which creates a trade barrier with the rest of the United Kingdom in the form of customs and regulatory checks at Northern Irish ports. We discussed Brexit and the cooperation thereafter very carefully with Great Britain. We have found a good way for Northern Ireland, and no one should unilaterally override the arrangement which we have agreed together, especially, of course, because because we know that this is a complicated issue which does not just deal with the relationship between the European Union and the United Kingdom, but also with the peaceful development in Ireland. Since the protocol came into force at the start of 2021, the arrangement has been a source of tension between the UK and the European Union. London has been trying for months to renegotiate the protocol with Brussels without any significant progress so far. The UK was the subject of warnings from the Europeans meanwhile, after Boris Johnson deemed the status of the province untenable. I think so. I, our message is quite clear. Uh, don't touch this. This is something we agreed on, and agreement needs to be, need to be respected. If that uh, agreement would be revoked, then I would think that um, 
the whole system will be revoked. I would not see any other solution. Inside Northern Ireland, the largest unionist party is threatening not to take part in government without renouncing certain customs controls established between Great Britain and Belfast. The renewal of the local assembly in Northern Ireland has revived discussions on post-Brexit arrangements following the victory of the Republicans of Sinn Féin, a party in favour of a reunification with the Republic of Ireland. After his uh, visit to Algeria, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov headed to Amman to attend a meeting with Amman Sultan Haytham bin Tariq in Muscat. Russian Foreign Ministry press service posted images of Lavrov's arrival and his reception by Sultan of Amman. The two talked to each other during the meeting at Al Alam Palace in the capital Muscat, Amman. He then met with the Deputy Prime Minister of Amman, Sayyid Fahad bin Mahmoud. In a statement, the Russian foreign minister said that his country has enough buyers of energy resources. If you're concerned about the prospect of war in Europe, we do not want that at all. But I draw your attention to the fact that it is the West that constantly and persistently declares that in this situation it is necessary to defeat Russia. Draw your own conclusions. Earlier, Russian Foreign Ministry, or rather Minister Sergei Lavrov, affirmed on Tuesday in Algiers the determination of Algeria and Russia to strengthen their cooperation through the signing of new documents, which will serve as a basis for bilateral relations. Marim Zian, on what follow? The visit of the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov confirms the strong ties between Algeria and Russia. During his visit to Algeria, the Russian top diplomat invoked the signature of a new document which will become the basis for bilateral relations between Algiers and Moscow. Today we stress the need for joint action to give our bilateral cooperation a more strategic character by signing the new document that would be the basis for our bilateral relations of this kind. After expressing his country's satisfaction with the development of bilateral relations, the Russian minister said that the volume of trade between the two countries reached 3 billion US dollars last year, adding that the countries will boost partnerships and investments in several fields. We affirmed our satisfaction with the development of Russian-Algerian bilateral relations as trade exchange during the past year reached $3 billion and we have opportunities to reach broader horizons. The Russian foreign minister revealed to have informed the Algerian side of the latest developments in the situation in Ukraine and praised Algeria's position towards it. Concerning the position of Algeria on the Ukrainian crisis, I have given high appreciation for it. And first of all, we thank Algeria for its comprehensive position for the number of issues which are related to this crisis and its surroundings. Lavrov denounced Joseph Borrell's suggestion of seizing frozen Russian exchange reserves to finance the reconstruction of Ukraine when asked by a journalist about the EU's proposal. Mr. Borrell is known for his various statements of confiscating of property of other countries, and he said that the Ukrainian issue should be resolved by force. But he must not forget that he represents European diplomacy and does not have a military position. The visit aimed at strengthening cooperation between Algiers and Moscow in several sectors of activity and prove the friendship of the two countries that dates back to six decades. To a different matter now, the Chinese military said once day that it had monitored and warned the U.S. warship that had sailed through the Taiwan Strait, an incident that occurred shortly after China carried out drills near the island, whereas the U.S. side claimed that the ship's transit through the Taiwan Strait demonstrates the U.S. commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific. The head of the World Health Organization said that the China zero COVID policy is not sustainable regarding the nature of the virus in a rare criticism of how government handled the coronavirus. Let's have a listen. Uh, when we talk about the zero um, COVID strategy, uh, we don't think that it's sustainable considering the behavior of the virus now and what we anticipate uh, in the future. We have uh, discussed about this issue with um, uh, Chinese uh, experts, 
uh, and we uh, indicated that the approach, um, uh, you know, uh, will not be sustainable. And considering uh, the uh, behavior of the virus, uh, I think a shift will be very important. Sri Lankan's authorities issued a shoot on site orders to quell further unrest in the country. On the streets, thousands of security forces were set to enforce the curfew in Sri Lanka. The Defense Ministry said troops have been ordered to shoot on site anyone looting public property or, ca or causing harm to life. For weeks, demonstrations are taking place in the country's capital, Colombo, over a dire economic crisis and demanding President Gotabaya resignation. Another two journalists were killed on Monday in Veracruz State in Mexico, bringing the total number to 11 victims since the beginning of the year. Mexico is on the course for one of the deadliest years yet for the press, with 11 journalists killing so far. Several protesters took the streets calling for ending the violence and prompting rights groups and authorities to react. That's very strong, because almost seven years ago, I was here asking for justice for my brother's murder. And now I'm coming back, unfortunately, to ask for justice for other journalists who were killed. My brother was killed in 2015. It's been almost seven years, but more and more journalists are being killed. It is painful, outraging, frustrating. Thinking of the families, the pain, the shock that surely still feels the family of Luis Enrique, who was killed recently, and the murders of his two comrades in Veracruz. Dozens of mothers searching for their missing children demonstrate in Mexico City on Mother's Day to protest inaction of the government. For them, there is nothing to celebrate on May 10th, Mother's Day, when their beloved kids are still missing. Every year, thousands of Mexicans present bunches of flowers to their mothers. But this year, things were different, as thousands of women took to the streets to demonstrate and to continue the search for their missing children. Two hundred escaped prisoners were recaptured on Tuesday by security forces as a result of a massive escape from prison in northern Ecuador so far. The chief of national police said that 200 prisoners have been recaptured during patrols and checkpoints by the security forces. It's worth mentioning that at least 44 prisoners died in clashes between two rival gangs on Monday inside uh, the prison of Bela Vestia. A total of 220 people escaped yesterday, and 200 have now been recaptured. It should be mentioned that the national government has set up a reward campaign ranging from $500 to $3,000 for citizens who can provide valuable information for the capturing of those who escaped yesterday. We designed an operation to check all roads, not only in the province, but also in the surrounding provinces, and so far, 200 people have been recaptured. A prominent Paraguayan prosecutor who fights against organized crime in his native country was assassinated while he was on his honeymoon in Colombia. Marcelo Pecci was killed by two gunmen on a, two gunmen on a beach on the, the tourist island of Beru, while police are doubling efforts to solve the case and find the criminals. Islam C. Don't watch follow. The head of the Colombian police said the prosecutor of Paraguay, Marcelo Pique, was murdered on the Colombian island of Barra on Tuesday. Marcelo Pique was specialized in the fight against organized crime, drug trafficking, money laundering, and terrorist financing. He was also known for his work on high-profile cases, including governor's daughter murdered last year and the case against Brazilian footballer Ronaldinho. In response to the homicide of Marcelo Pichi that occurred in the city of Cartagena, more specifically on the island of Barro, an urgent and rapid decision was taken to send five investigators. According to officials, five Colombian investigators were sent to the island of Barro, where the murder was committed, 
to conduct investigations with the support of Paraguay and the United States. Pekini's wife Claudia Aguilera were on their honeymoon at the resort near the Caribbean city of Cartagena. His wife said they were approached by two men on a private beach connected to their hotel before her husband was shot. Rest assured that we will redouble our efforts to continue to fight organized crime, transitional crime and drug trafficking. This is in the name of Martello and all the prosecutors who risk their lives every day for their work, for their struggle. Colombian President Van Duque also condemned the assassination via his Twitter account and assured that he was in contact with his Paraguayan counterpart in order to ensure all cooperation necessary to find those responsible. It is very painful, very hard. I spoke with the Colombian president Ivan Duque on the phone and he promised me that he would give us all his support to solve the case and to look for those responsible. I have also spoken with the North American government about this, which will support us through Colombia. Now, I am going to visit the Attorney General. Paraguay and Colombia have strengthened their cooperation against international organized crime in recent years. Despite decades of fighting cartels and drug traffickers, Colombia remains the world's largest producer and exporter of cocaine. The scandal of uh, spying on the phones of Spanish officials, most notably Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, continues to create the events in Spanish political and media scene by casting doubts on the Pegasus spy program that the Kingdom of Morocco uses as a Prussia card on Madrid in order to change its historical position toward Western Sahara. Hussein Burkano, not follow. The Zionist incursion into the highest centers of government in the Kingdom of Morocco is no longer a secret, since the relationship between the Kingdom and the Zionist entity went to public and major deals were made. Perhaps the most valuable thing that the entity has given to the Kingdom is the Pegasus spy program, which Spain was the biggest victim of. By targeting the phone of its Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, with spyware attacks that put Rabat at the center of resounding scandal, according to what the local media reported. The Spanish newspaper The Independent published a lengthy investigation testimonies proving the practice of the Kingdom of Mohammed VI systematic espionage operations against the citizens and against the foreign officials. The newspaper quoted Moroccan journalist Hisham Mansour, one of the founders of the Moroccan Association for Investigative Journalism, that Pegasus is part of what be called the new strategies of repression used by Mohammed VI, noting that the espionage operations are carried out in coordination with the Zionist entity. Morocco is not only doing this for itself, but is working with other countries, mainly Israel. This would explain why such an expensive program is bought by a country that is not the richest in the world. Morocco may have acted as a subcontractor to Israel to spy on European heads of state and politicians in exchange for normalization of relations, economic cooperation and impunity in the use of Pegasus. The aftershocks of the scandal of planting the Pegasus spy program in the phone of the Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez reached the top of the pyramid of the Spanish security institutions as the government dropped the name of Paz Esteban from the head of the Spanish National Intelligence Center, which has long used the Zionist program to spy on Catalan nationalist separatists. Scandal brought together wide Spanish political and media circles that the Kingdom of Morocco is the main suspect as they turned Rabat into an international spying center. Spain was the biggest victim of this by extracting a sudden unilateral stance from the Sanchez government regarding the conflict in Western Sahara. The Spanish media doesn't rule out that Sanchez has acquiesced in the Pegasus attacks. Elon Musk, uh, the Twitter new owner, pledged he would lift the final suspension of Donald Trump's account after the capture attack once his Twitter deal completed, saying that it's a foolish act because it's isolated a large part of the country, believing that this was a morally wrong and insane decision and an attempt to prevent Donald Trump from making his voice heard. Andy Warhol's portrait of Marilyn Monroe uh, was awarded $195 million at auction on Monday night in New York City. The sale of a uh, shot sage blue Marilyn 
Oh, Marilyn broke the previous record for an American artwork of auction of 110.5 million US dollars set in 2017 for 1982, painting by Jean uh, Michel Basque. The famous portrait by the American pop at Mather became the most expensive 20th century artwork ever sold at public auctions. Ladies and ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. Take care of yourself and have a blessed evening.